Congressman Wenstrup, how are you? How are you, Brad? I just wanted to, uh, I, I, I told people I thought you were going to make it, um, and I hope that you had. Um, and uh, we had to get started. I know you got no, tied no, up with something please. else, but um, you got anything that you would I'll, like to? I'll be very brief. Uh, you know, as this progresses, it seems the money is coming from the USDA and the state is managing the situation, although I think they point back and forth. But I did talk to ODA today, David Daniel, and he said that it, it very much appears that the recommendation of the preferred method of treatment by the USDA to them yeah. will be to remove infected trees and inject high-risk trees. Caveat being that they will still reserve the right to decide if some trees are a higher risk and should still be taken away. Okay. So that's what I got from, from him about five hours ago. Okay, now that's interesting because the way we interpret that is yes, the according to the, uh, the uh, EA, and believe me, my team is now taking this thing apart sentence by sentence, I literally sentence by sentence to find out what was added, what was subtracted, what is the angle that they're now pushing with now. And essentially what, it's, what they're saying is it's still, a, they still have the entire control of the process. They have the ability to they see, being USDA. they be the USDA, yes. So in other words, they're not saying to you as a property owner, hey Brad, you know what, which trees in your yard um, that are not in your manicured area, which trees in your yard would you like us to treat instead of take down? Mm -hmm. They're not giving you that option. All they're saying is, hey, you know what? We're going to give the property owner the ability to uh, decide what to do. They, they, can, they can refuse to allow the government on their property, okay? They can say, I can say, hey, you know what, USDA, you're not coming in here and taking out these, um, these uh, river birch trees in my front yard just because you think they might get a beetle in them. Now, they'll, what they have said, though, is they will continue to monitor those trees, but they will not treat them. If you refuse it initially, yeah. So then they'll take it down. Well, that's probably so their hope is what will happen. Yeah. Well, their hope is what will happen is at some point that tree will become infested and they'll end up taking it down anyway. Yeah, anyway. I, I mean, that's the way we interpret uh, what's uh, what's it doesn't uh, in the state heart, otherwise in heart of the mm -hmm. EA. What's that? It doesn't state otherwise. Right. It, it doesn't says, state it that you're going to have the ability to, to say right for refusal. Yes. You said that the, the EA is still going on. It. it, it EA is still going on. The, the, the assessment, maybe, maybe I misunderstood. But, um, maybe but, because but we still have time to comment. Yeah, yeah I think maybe that, maybe that was it. Yeah. yeah, there's still open discussion, but it, it said it looks very likely that their recommendation is, in, in, in a nutshell, is that you know, they, will, they will cut down the infected trees. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the high risk trees they will get. That's, that's that would what be. I was told. And you know who did that? Everybody who comes. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, that's exactly right. You're the guy who can be thanked for that because, we, I mean, we, yeah, we were kind of the steering committee for getting this thing rolling, but it was the comments that came out of the, the property owners in Bethel it was the, 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 that made them step back and say, whoa, wait a second, I referred to that earlier. I mean, they didn't want to have to come back, they don't, didn't want to have to come in here and make concessions, and we forced them to do that. Yeah, I mean, um, following this through you and, and everything you did, there's no doubt that if you sat back and did nothing, those trees would be gone. They should be gone. That's and, exactly right. Uh, so your, yeah. your efforts don't seem to be lost. And, and what uh, Mr. Daniel said basically goes, I, I know you all wish you didn't have to face this whole thing at all, yeah. but this is a step in a better direction than what was going to happen. So um, it, it yes. was hurt somewhat and don't stop. Yes, yes. And that's the key. Don't yeah, that's, the, that's the key. I'm glad you brought that up because essentially one of the things we'll mention early, uh, later on is that, you know, we're doing this because we want to stay a little bit on the defensive side. Uh, yeah, if you read the outward uh, proposal in that environmental assessment, it looks really good. But when you get to read all the details, there's some things that we really have questions about. Who actually is controlling the... the uh, now, did you suggest an oversight committee? I did, and that's not going to happen. Well, he brought it up. And he said, did he? Yeah, well, he mentioned that that had been asked for, so I don't know if that's off the table. It's just not who would be on the oversight. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't be. No, they, they, they're not going to let me on there. Well, I, I guarantee you. I don't know if you're talking about local elected officials or, or who would be. We have 
asked for that. Uh, we have, we've asked for. that for years because yeah. here, what we found out was what they did in Worcester, Massachusetts, is they pulled a, 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 a panel together, a commission together, that were the stakeholders. You know, it was the, the politicians, it was the city manager's office, it was the forestry people, it was the, uh, the maple Community syrup house. industry. I mean, it was a little bit of everybody. Right. It was, and it was civilians that sat on that. Yeah. you got to remember, this is the same civilian group that got kicked out of a secret meeting because they found out that we, super were, uh, we were from the Bethel ALB. Super secret meeting, yeah. yeah. Well, you might want to continue to recommend that and maybe formulate how you would how you would envision it being yeah. Yeah. Something sure to recommend in your comments. Yeah, yeah, I would love to do that. Oh, that's a, to yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Uh, because, see, in fact, we have video of the USDA denying us the right to uh, sit across a table from them and uh, discuss this in, a, in an open forum. Uh, we actually have that video tape from the Claremont County Fairgrounds where we asked them, hey, come on, guys, you know, why can't we just sit across the table from them? And they refuse. So. And you should know, since you're, you, you weren't in the very beginning, they were invited here tonight. And uh, they, don't, they don't show to these things. They never have. So. Well, that's all I got, but keep it up. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks Brad. Thanks. Okay, for those of you that don't know, Congressman Westrom has been, before he was Congressman, has been supportive of our efforts out here. So we're really glad to have him on board. Uh, Joe Eaker couldn't make it. He had, had wanted to come. Uh, he's tied up in Columbus. Um, uh, Doug Green, as I said, uh, wasn't able to make it, but his wife, uh, Norman, is here, and we're glad to have her with us as well. Um, okay, let me see. Where am I at? Uh, oh, I... Well, you know what? I should probably let uh, Danae tell the story about the Blue Ribbon Project. How many of you guys have seen the Blue Ribbons around uh, Bethel? You know, that was kind of a brainstorm. It was actually Danae's brainstorm, and she thought that it would be an, an interesting way to raise awareness so that when people are driving down 125 and they see an entire woodlot with 100 trees with blue ribbons on it, to, to come to the realization of what it would look like if the government had gotten away with what they wanted to do when they came in here. So for instance, Brownie's lot down there on uh, 125, just out of the village, uh, we went in there and we put the blue ribbons on his property. Every one of those blue ribbons on his trees represents a tree that the government wanted to come cut down. So when you walk, drive by there, just think about what it would look like if all the trees were gone. Bill, you won't believe the people that they asked me about the blue ribbons on my tree. Really? I don't believe it. I got today that Bob them to the media they asked about. Yeah. <laughs> Look, take all those trees down. I said, no, we can help it. And you know what? See, that's exactly what we, that's exactly what uh, Danae envisioned. You know, hey, you know what? Let's raise awareness. Let's raise the. Uh, Let's, ra uh, let's raise the public perception of what, it, what the intention is of the federal government to come in here and take all these trees down. I'll let Danae talk about that in just a second. But the interesting thing that I want to bring is, because I'm sure she won't, the interesting thing about that is that we found out in retrospect that what the USDA did is the USDA actually spent three days trying to figure out a way legally to force us to remove the, the blue ribbons from the trees. Couldn't do it. Let's get more of that. Couldn't do it. Yeah, let's get more of that. It makes me excited to hear that we made them mad. They're <laughs> mad at us now. They are coming around. The, the guy that showed up to talk to me about our bugs, they were telling me that we're mismarking trees. <laughs> oh, he accused you of mismarking he's, trees. Yeah, he's saying that uh, the blue ribbons are mismarked, they're mismarked trees. <laughs> that we're mis yeah, that we've hit, we've that, hit ash trees, which are not going to be alive anyway yeah. because of the MYF. Yeah, I yeah. love that argument. They're going to die anyhow. Yeah, you know, so here's an example. Here, here's kind of what I was getting at earlier. We have tried everything we possibly could to get a cooperative uh, a spirit between the USDA and the powers that be and our organization. I mean, they just keep coming out and just keep kicking us in the gut, and it just makes me crazy. I'll give you an example. And you don't even know this, Christy. I, Christy had called me on a Saturday and said, is there any way you could come over? Are you, are you okay with me telling a story? Is there any way you could come over and look at some wood in my fireplace hearth? I, I got firewood from out in uh, Hammersville. And she says, there's larva all over the base of the little carry thing when I brought it in from the... So I went over there, um, and I, we looked at the wood. The wood was all round. It was a roundhead larva, which, could, which actually is... Um, um, uh, what's the Cerem name of our beetle? Cerambicida. It is actually Cerambicida. It's just not Cerambicida asia longhorn. 
It's a longhorn beetle, but it's not Cerambicin. And that's what it turned out to be. But here's the way it was handled. So I went over there, and I took these beetles, and I put them in a, a test tube, and I put them in my freezer, and I froze them for three days. At the end of three days, I took them down there to the, uh, a, to the Asian longhorn beetle office in Amelia. Now I'm thinking I'm doing what I would think is the, the proper thing to do, you know, the responsible thing to do as a public, just like me reporting this beetle in the first place, doing what you think is responsible. So here's what happens. I go down there, they take the beetles, they have this little powwow after I left, and I find out in retrospect that, that one of the USDA officials went to one of my neighbors and said, Bill should have known better than to bring beetles out of the quarantine. <laughs> I was furious. I mean, I was not only furious, but I was hurt. There I am. I'm trying to do what I think is the right thing. These things have been dead frozen in my freezer for three days. And yet, they didn't even have the, the, the decency to ask to tell me personally. They went to a neighbor and said, Bill should have known better than to bring them out of the quarantine. Oh, God's sake. Well, you should have known this. I should have known better. <laughs> I, I wasn't thinking. I, uh, you, uh, okay, so the so the so the big thing about the uh, blue ribbon, the, the big thing about the blue ribbon, and I, uh, one thing I wanted to mention, I should have mentioned in the very beginning, this is not. Uh, if you have a question at any point, we're going to have a question and answer period at the end of this uh, this presentation. Um, in fact, the majority of the time will be for question and answer. But if there's any time, at any point in the discussion that you have a question, please just feel free to yell out that this is not a formal, by any means, a formal presentation. I'm not that kind of presenter. All right, so let's see. Hey, Bingo, do you want to come up and mention a, a little bit about what's going on with the Blue Ribbon, uh, Danae, and um, uh, explain uh, what the new concept is with the... Okay. Yeah. All right. Can you all hear me? Um, okay. So what he was saying, basically the Blue Ribbon Project just started just <clears throat> to bring awareness just because um, we still had so many people in town like, oh, we have a beetle. Oh, they want to cut our trees. And so we're trying to, to let people realize just how many healthy trees <clears throat> were at stake. Okay, because people didn't, still did not realize that the USDA at that point were, their preferred method was to come and cut all of our 13 species of potential host trees. So um, we decided that, hey, what if we start uh, putting this blue ribbon around them? And we chose blue because blue was how they marked um, the healthy trees when they came in. They were using red for infested, blue for healthy. So uh, we, got, we got the blue and um, we got some volunteers and went around and we asked permission. It was on private property, which is why the USDA was not able to make us take them down. Um, but it was just to give a visual so that when people were going through town, they could look at all the trees that were marked and be like, you know, wow, I had no idea they were actually they were going to cut that down. And um, we want to try to mark just the ones that are the potential host trees on the species list. There probably are a couple mismarked ones. Volunteers did it, and a lot of the leaves were down. They're hard to identify. But, you know, you could always just take the ribbon down. It's not a big deal. But it's still representing, you know, way less of our canopy than would have been taken down anyway. So um, that said, even though they have now changed and said their preferred method now may, may be to chemically treat, we don't know that they're going to choose that. We don't know, you know, what, what will happen. We're still going to try to get as many blue ribbons out there as we can. So um, it's hard to get volunteers out everywhere. So what we did is um, uh, you were all handed a blue ribbon, I think, as you came in. If those are to just stick around your mailbox, if you would like to do that, just as a, a symbol of solidarity. Okay, that this is what we're behind. Um, and if you would like to get some blue ribbon to mark your own trees, um, the potential host species list is on our website if you don't know what the 13 species are. Um, there's a box of ribbons back here. You could grab some to take to mark your own trees in your yards if you would like to. If you have some left, give it to your neighbors and let them mark theirs. 
Um, if you have a lot left over, um, it, it is an expense that we have to buy. So there's um, a drop box at Community Savings Bank in Bethel. If you want to swing by, if you have some leftover ribbon, just drop it there and then uh, somebody else can pick it up and use it later and we'll collect it and redistribute. Um, something else we're in the process of possibly doing, we have to make sure we have the permission, we talked to Village Council. Um, we may be just getting some volunteers to go up and down the streets just to, uh, we'll mark anything that's standing there. Poles, the signs, the whatever, so that it's blue all the way up and downtown for a little while, and at least until we hear back from this. Today, so, um, today, yeah. we, Travis and I was just chatting back and forth, and we say go ahead and do it. Okay, great. So, um, anyway, we would appreciate your help. Uh, that's, that's an easy way to get it around without us having to... Um, you know, organize a whole day to do it and, um, you know, just spread the word. Thank you. Hey, yeah. I just wanted to say something. Uh, I went down to get the species.